Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Ellison. I'm coming to the conclusion video of the series I've been doing of the relationship between diet and coronary heart disease, saturated fat and cholesterol. Now, I have quite a few research papers here. I'll show you the titles of some of them. This one's called The Low Fat, Low Cholesterol Diet is Ineffective. So we know that's true. And then, got a great one. Here, this is about a statistical analysis that was done. And the conclusions were that a statistical analysis showed that there is no significant evidence for concluding that dietary saturated fat is associated with increased risk of coronary heart disease. More data are needed to elucidate whether cardiovascular disease risks are likely to be influenced by the specific nutrients used to replace saturated fat. And then I have another really good study. And in this one, they looked at the blood vessels in postmenopausal women and tried to identify what would cause coronary artery disease to progress. And the surprising finding was that the inverse association between saturated fat intake, that means the saturated fat intake goes up, coronary artery disease goes down. That's what inverse means. Now that's counterintuitive, isn't it? When we've been heard, we've heard for 50 years now that high intakes of saturated fat would cause coronary heart disease. That's not what they found. They actually measured the arteries in this study using very sophisticated techniques to see how this was progressing over a three-year period. And this inverse relationship finding was unexpected because they expected it to be what they've heard for years and years, that it was caused by saturated fat. The findings also suggest that carbohydrate intake may increase atherosclerotic progression, especially when refined carbohydrates replace saturated or monounsaturated fats. Well, now, isn't that a fascinating tale? So it's actually the carbohydrates that are leading to the progression of the coronary artery disease, not the saturated fat. So I did say that there was no proof of a link between diet and coronary artery disease, but I should say a link between eating fat and coronary artery disease. What we're now finding out is that there is a link, there is a connection, but it's not the fat, it's the carbohydrates. That's pretty amazing. So a great deal of studies have been performed since the early 2000s looking at the role of carbohydrates, and we've been looking at the cellular mechanisms by which Carbohydrates are affecting things. These authors write, the unraveling of the details of these cellular events has proceeded rapidly, but their physiological relevance to lifestyle modification has been largely ignored. So that means we are finding out from specific research how carbohydrates are causing the progression of disease, heart disease, diabetes, everything else, and the findings that these scientists are gathering are simply being ignored by the government, by nutritional groups, by all of those people who make health recommendations because they're married to the idea that it's cholesterol and saturated fat that are causing these diseases. So now even in the face of the evidence disproving that, we finally have the evidence proving the link between diet and coronary heart disease and even diabetes, never saturated fat, looks like it was always carbohydrates, particularly carbohydrates that are consumed with the fat. And that was a point that was not brought out before. I found one paper, very early paper from 1984, suggesting that it was the combination of this. And this is what I've argued in my writings and my books that it's the combination of carbohydrate along with saturated fat that makes saturated fat look like the villain when it's not. It's actually the carbohydrates causing it to do that. So things are progressing very, very fast now, and it's just unbelievable that our
health recommendations. We're not paying attention. Now, Dr. Jeff Volick writes in his paper, this very important statement here, let's get to it. Sorry to move moving so slow. I thought I had this marked. So Dr. Volek writes, persistence of recommendations in the face of continued failure of large trials to show an effect of saturated fat remains one of the strange anomalies in current medical science. So we now have proof, as I've been telling you, that there are no trials that have proved that saturated fat and cholesterol are the cause of heart disease. Now we're finding out that carbohydrates are involved and nobody wants to pay any attention to that. They want to stick their guns on the issue of saturated fat. So I have no idea when this whole thing is going to blow up, but it will. It may take 15, 20 years or longer, but it doesn't have to take that long for you. You can decide to reject all the information that you've received about diet and heart disease and, and start following an appropriate diet. I have the great version of the low carbohydrate diet spelled out in my book so you can get on that and start benefiting directly from carbohydrate restriction and that's the key. We really need to start looking at restricting carbohydrates. And these fellows are all writing in their paper that it looks like the low carb diet or the carbohydrate restricted diet should be the default diet to help us improve our health and reduce our risk of heart disease and diabetes and even cancer. And of course, I cover a lot of this in my book, The Glycation Factor. Very few of them are talking about glycation, but ultimately it is glycation that's involved here. And some of them are obviously talking about the importance of blood sugar, glucose, and the insulin and their role in playing attack on the blood vessel walls, and that, that's true. That's the insulin theory of disease and aging. And then we also have the mitochondrial theory of aging. The mitochondria, as I've described, are the powerhouses in the cell that produce energy. And they're being poisoned and damaged as a result of their exposure to blood sugar. And insulin has a very potent effect on reducing the body's ability to repair those damaged mitochondria. So it's time to wake up. The low-carbohydrate diet is taking its place in the improvement of health for millions of people. It's not just about weight control anymore. It goes way beyond that. So we are at a new age. We are at a dietary and nutritional revolution that's being spearheaded by the low-carbohydrate diet. So that's the end of my five-part series on diet, heart disease, the lipid theory of heart disease, and go forth and restrict your carbohydrates. I'm Dr. Greg Ellis.